All right, so I'm currently on the phone with the members of Death Gravity. I'm going to go ahead and give them a chance to introduce themselves. What's going on, guys? Scorpion here, lead singer. Hey, guys, this is Carlos, drummer slash producer of Death Gravity. Uh, well, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, so to kind of kick off these interviews, I always like to kind of get into the nitty gritty of, you know, how you first got into music. So why don't you each kind of take a turn telling me about, you know, how you first came in contact with music and what about it was inspiring to you? Uh, I mean, if I, if I may, I can start. Um, this is Carlos, by the way. I started, as a matter of fact, very young, at around six years old. I was, I used to live in Mexico, in Ciudad Juarez, right across the border here from El Paso. And I started playing in the first grade in what they call, it was just like a little snare and bugle core. We just used to play the national anthem, little things like that. And we would perform in front of the school on a regular basis. And from the first show, I was hooked. I mean, I love the, the attention, I guess. Um, I guess the respect that the uniform commanded, if you will. But later on, my family and I, we moved over here to the States and I got to join regular, you know, what ba the regular band is here in the schools and high school, marching band, college, I played the trumpet. And from there, and especially in middle school, I started playing other instruments, the piano, um, the clar I started playing a little bit of clarinet, but that's also when I started playing the drums. Mm -hmm. And somehow when I was 15 years old, my stepdad, bought me a drum set and I suspect nowadays it was just to make my mom angry and it's great. It <laughs> Excellent. worked out, you know, it's been, uh, this was in 2007, uh, 16 years, if I'm not mistaken, that I've been playing and, you know, the rush never goes away. I, I guess for me, especially what really got me in, into it when I was in university, the biggest audience I played with for was 67,000 people. Mm -hmm. And just hearing the roar of that crowd, you know, it was just, that's been my drag. I've been chasing that dragon ever since, you know, that's, there's, uh, there's no way to describe it. It was just been such an amazing feeling that I've been, been chasing after it ever since. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, Chris, how about you? Well, I mean, I started with music actually kind of late, kind of late, late, like music a lot, but uh, I think I, Got my first drum set when I was 14. Um, that's when I really started getting into it more. But I've always loved music. Um, as far as the drumming thing, I, I started drumming and then eventually uh, I started to play bass. And then now I'm doing lead vocals. But um, I definitely did not see myself being a musician since this age i started seeing at the age of 25. okay and what do you think kind of set into you at that age where you're just like fuck i, I want to i want to try playing music when you start late the late it's kind of intimidating you know what i mean because for example carlos you know he's so young most people start very you know they're doing stuff i just i felt like and i was very into uh rest to land, but you know, like WWE, I want to be a wrestler. I injured my knee, so that's how that you know that messed up. And then uh, that's I've always loved music, like I said, though. But I I did like when I would see shows, I would be like, wow, like those those guys are like superheroes on stage. Like that's so awesome. Mm -hmm. And then ever since then, it just uh, I was like, wow, like I want to do that. Sure. And so when you kind of made that decision that you wanted to be in a band and become a musician, uh, and this question is for both of you, did you just kind of uh, reach out and start looking for other musicians to play with? Or did you kind of each just find each <laughs> other and it all came together? Actually, there's an interesting story to that. For uh, the way that we all met, the way that Death Gravity came together was a little bit of an accident. It was one of those butterfly effect moments. I didn't know these guys. I didn't know anybody in the band. And I went to this smoke shop one time to pick up some butane. And the owner was telling somebody else that they had a 420 show and they needed musicians. And out of the blue, I just told the guy, hey, you know, I play guitar and I sing too. You know, I'd be down to play. So I got put in the, uh, on the roster. And well, when I arrived, there was somebody else whose name I'm not going to mention, uh, playing. And I uh, met that person, started, you know, working with them in my studio. And 
we formed a band and that's where I met Chris and Alex, our guitar player. And at first, especially Chris and I, it was a little weird. There was not really much of a connection between the both of us. We were just... Oh man, it was bad. It was. We were just bandmates. It was awkward. <laughs> at, at best, we were just bandmates, but mm -hmm. things didn't pan out with that first project and we got separated. I didn't see the guys. We didn't see each other for a while and I had left my drums with Chris. I went to pick them up one day and there they are talking about forming a band. And at first they just were talking about it, but mm -hmm. then I asked them, do you guys have a drummer? And they said, well, no, but we didn't think you would want to play. And I thought, I said, hell yeah, of course I want to play. And actually to get back, uh, okay. when the other band actually uh, has started gravity with someone else. And then that's when Carlos showed up and, that's when the other Alex showed up and it's just, you know, that's how that came about, really. It was love at first sight. Okay. And when you guys first got together, did you go through kind of the general, you know, let's just jam and feel each other out kind of thing? Or did you kind of immediately get into writing music? No. From the get-go, we said this is not a jam thing. This is not just a hobby like we're in this for the big time. We need original music. We need to work. We need to, we need a studio. From the first day, we said, you know, this is, we're going to the top, nowhere else. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Chris, from your perspective, what was that like? Oh, very awkward at first to be complete. Cause like, you know, me and Carlos didn't, none of us really didn't know each other like at all. And then, uh, you know, the previous band before that, we were still, you know, I had barely gotten to know them. I had barely known them maybe a few months of that. Okay. And you uh, shared that same vision. You know, it was about being like a studio project to get out, produce music, play live, and then grow up the charts kind of thing. Pretty much, yes. So they individual. We had, it all came to about, I said, let's have a meeting, a career, not just a jam, jam session, you know, for a living. We want to get paid, you know. You know, this is what we want to do. Yeah. And I don't want no BS. We, we said it from the get go no BS, just straight this is work. This is a business. This is our, you know, how we're going to have it to ourselves. Sure. Awesome. And um, since, uh, since that initial moment of inception, you know, where are you guys now? Are you, you know, producing music, out playing shows? Uh, give me a bit about what's currently on your plate. Uh, I have, I think, three singles out, if I'm not mistaken. And we've been working on a lot of music lately. So hopefully soon. So, uh, music videos, all that good stuff. But we're definitely working hard, and we've been playing shows since like 2021. We actually did not play a single show for a whole formed in the summer of 2020. So we did not play a single show because of COVID, unfortunately. Um, sure. I actually have something, a little plot twist here for you, Alex. Um, okay. You interviewed Bridges of Blaze, correct? Yes. <laughs> so you familiar you're familiar with Ruben, right? Um uh beyond the fact that I interviewed him, I don't know him personally. Gotcha. Well, Ruben, one of the guitar players for Bridges the Blade, is actually my brother. Oh, awesome. Very cool. So as you can see, music kinda runs in our veins. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so shout out to Bridges of Blaze, of course. <laughs> For sure. So did you kind of see, you know, what he was doing and you kind of were just like, well, shit, I want to be a part of that. We actually used to play together. Um, we had we were in a band called Unwritten, um, formed in 2017, I, I believe. Uh, and we were in a band together for a while. It was, it was going good, but we just we all just fell apart. Uh, at the time, I was living in Austin, Texas, and then up in, I got sick, so I moved back to El Paso, Texas. So Ruben found his own thing with a Bridges of Blaze. Sure. And then I wanted to form a new band just from scratch. Just something, this is something new for me, too. I'm, this is the first time I'm a lead singer for a band as well. Sure. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I always like it when there's little connections like that. It's a, a nice little running plot thread. Um, cool. So uh, back to the question that I did ask. Um, are you guys, uh, you said you have a few singles out. Are you currently writing more material and producing that? Carlos, you said you're a producer? That's correct. And oh, yeah, 
absolutely. We have not really, things have kind of slowed down a bit and sped up. We never really stopped though. We've been writing since day one. We're up to a few songs. We got a few ready to be released. Uh, our social media also, we've been hitting that hard. We've managed to grow our Instagram quite a bit. Right now, if I'm not mistaken, we're at about 102,000 subscribers. Let me just confirm the followers, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 101,000. So we might not always be working every single day, but that doesn't mean we ever do. Sure, and since I assume you're a producer, you're the one recording and engineering all of your material? Correct. Awesome, very cool. Uh, are you guys waiting till you have like a full length of album out to release, or are you just gonna like trickle out the singles? What's kind of your you know plan for a release cadence? Um, well, if I may say so, uh, we have, I think we have enough for an album worth but I think we'd better rather release a couple of EPs at first. Okay. And Chris, would you agree with that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, we, we want to start off, you know, kind of teasing people, not just release everything at once kind of thing. Sure. Awesome. And then where do you guys kind of see yourself in, you know, five or ten years? Where do you want to see this project get to? I mean, you kind of already hinted at it, but uh, give it to me in your words. I'd like to be on fe playing festivals, you know. Uh, we've had... Uh, our other guitar player, Alex, and I had this discussion a couple of days ago, you know, we want to be at the stage where we are on first name basis with bands like Avenged Sevenfold, Lamb of God, you know, to be able to say, yo, Avenged Sevenfold is throwing a cookout and they invited us, let's hit him up. You know, that's, I think that's where we would like to be. It sounds a little bit cocky, but you can't get to the top without being. Yeah, I think that's realistic. I mean, shoot for your goals, definitely. Uh, Chris, what about you? I think we have the same goals. It's kind of why we along was we, we all just we're thriving to be the top. We're like we're not just trying to be just a local band. We want to be, you know, an international band. We, like, I, like he said, he wants to be festivals. I want to play like in Germany. That's one of my dreams to play in Germany and bring kind of a uh, stage. Actually, we are going to be in a festival. In, on June 17th, to be exact, in Glensdale, Arizona. Um, well, so where can people find the stuff that you have put out? What are your social media links? You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on TikTok. Um, you can even find us on YouTube. Uh, just look up, up Death Gra on Instagram. We're Death Gravity 2020. Um, on YouTube as well, Death Gravity. Um, and you can find our music pretty much on all platforms be it YouTube Music, Pandora, uh, Spotify, you name it. Uh, so I always like to give the person I'm, or people that I'm interviewing the opportunity to put out their last word. So why don't you, each of you take a turn just putting out a message of, you know, something you resonate with that you want to throw out there. Go ahead, Carlos. Ooh, you're gonna, you got to got me a surprise. Um, <laughs> just, you know, come check us out. We're Death Gravity. We've been... One of the hardest working bands that I've ever been in. And these guys, they're fantastic. I would not play with anybody else in this world. And uh, you guys are going to see us real soon, all over YouTube especially. That's something that, that is something that we're working on. And um, yeah, hope to see everybody real soon, wherever they are. We will be all over the place. So just keep an eye out and shoot us a text. We're always there. Uh, Chris, how about you? Well, guys, like Carlos says, come check us out. We're super hardworking and we're ready to take on the world. But don't forget, you guys, our music speaks for itself. We want everyone to enjoy it. 